So as Jan very kindly said, I used to be a VC in this space. Um, I'm recovering, it's okay. Um, but I did learn a lot while I was doing it. I looked, like many of you, thousands of businesses in this space, and concluded quite rapidly that actually we don't have a technology problem. Yes, there are lots of technology issues that we need to address, but what we really have is a mental attitude problem. And how many of you have seen this chart? That's just nowhere near enough, right? The challenge we have ahead of us is we have to decarbonize, not just a little bit, but we have to go back to zero within the next 20 to 30 years. That's a massive challenge, and quite clearly our generation doesn't seem to care. Maybe we think we'll all be dead by then. But the next generation won't be dead by then, and they do care. I'm sure you've all come across Greta Thunberg and Fridays for the Future marches. I love Greta. She's the best thing that's happened to our business. But the point is that students and the young generation are not being taught about energy literacy, energy literacy and carbon literacy at schools, or given the tools to do anything about it. Yet, if they as students know what to do, as adults, they'll behave differently. But more importantly, as students, they can also influence their parents. When I go into schools and they say, well, what can we do to make a difference? I ask them, did you get what you wanted for Christmas? The answer is normally yes. And that's the power that that generation has. And if we can teach them to do that, then we can accelerate the pace of change. So what do we do? Funding education in schools is difficult if you're trying to raise charity money to do it. So instead, we put solar panels on the school, and we use the income stream from those solar panels to fund the education into those schools. And in order to do that, we've built an online platform that de-risks the whole process. The trick here is a little bit like Airbnb enabled homeowners to make money out of their spare bedroom by de-risking the process. Same with the school. We take out the whole risk and whole, all the challenges about putting solar panels on the school, and then we manage it for them. And what does that mean? Globally, there are about 2.5 million schools that could host solar. Collectively, there would be about 120 gigawatts of solar, for those of you who like project finance. Um, that would stop about 60 million tons of CO2. That's not really very much. That's about less than 0.2% of what we have to achieve. The real change comes from those 2 billion young people, each one of them who could influence a parent or relative around them to decarbonize faster. The fact that the schools will save 300 billion is a nice bonus, but from our point of view and our investors, the interesting thing is the 3 billion a year in recurring ongoing management fees from looking after those systems on those schools. So where are we today? Uh, we're currently growing at about 50 to 100 percent a year. Um, we're break-even, survival break-even. Uh, we've got operations in the UK, Germany. We just completed our first project in India, uh, and we're about to launch in Spain. There's about 20 of us working on this, uh, and by the end of the year, we'll be doing that two schools a week. But that's nothing. It's a nice little business, but it's not going to make a big enough impact. What I need to do is I need to get to the point where our platform, our online system, can cope with 2,000 schools a week. And for that, today we're announcing the, fund, the start of a fundraising of two million pounds to accelerate that process. So what does that mean? Already our online platform allows us to analyze any one of about 80,000 schools in the UK and Germany. Uh, the billing process, the management systems are all there, uh, and all of the administration tools, we can instantly provide a quote to school. Uh, but what we need to do next is digitize the entire process, the whole workflow, to automate it more and get it to the point where partners and ultimately students can develop a project themselves. Uh, and then that links back to the education piece. So on the top left, you'll see a chart, which is what we provide to school as the very basic level entry, is we show them how much the school's consuming and how much the school's generating. And that starts the questions of, well, what happens when the sun isn't shining? Where do we get the electricity from otherwise? And that starts the conversation about, at the microcosm of a school, how do you balance the demand and supply? And that's a question we have to resolve if we go to 100% renewables as a society as a whole. Uh, we have an amazing advisory board to help us. Um, quick slide on the Solar and Back Champions, which is where students can develop a project themselves, and we want to take that the whole way through. So rather than going protesting on Fridays, they can actually develop a project for their own school. Um, I'm very fortunate to have an amazing team covering both project development, marketing to schools, international platform development. Um, I have 10 years' experience previously as an entrepreneur in the internet space, so I do believe this can be digitized, and we're working on a way to do that. I'm also incredibly fortunate, in addition to Jan, who just invested as an angel, to have an amazing network of other angel investors, including the previous CEO of Siemens Solar, uh, the previous CEO of uh, QCells, uh, and a bunch of um, partners in infrastructure funds. So a great network. I'm very much looking forward to meeting potential investors to do our first institutional fund and take this to the next level. Thank you.